Jason Calacanis joins us to talk about what big tech has been through over the last couple of weeks. Welcome back, Jason. Good to see you. Good to see you, Carl. Where has your head been on Parler uh, and what's significant about their return if they can make this stick? Yeah, I mean, Parler was like the island of like the misfit uh, children, everybody who got kicked off of Twitter, you know, found a home there. And it was pretty gnarly. I've been on it since it started and they were doing very little policing and people were saying some pretty crazy um, incendiary stuff on there, including somebody who was pretty high profile saying they should take VP Pence and, uh, you know, have him face the firing squad for treason. And this kind of um, inciting of violence, as we saw on January 6th, is no longer, a, you know, a theoretical somebody screaming fire in a, a crowded theater. I mean, it, people are dying because of this dog whistling. And my belief is that, you know, some group of law enforcement uh, folks went to Amazon Google, Apple, I don't have definitive proof of this, but uh, that's been the chatter here in Silicon Valley and just said, hey, listen, here's the receipts. Hmm. Do you want to have another January 6th? And do you want to know if you could have avoided it? Um, and, and the other thing that's occurring is the employees at these companies simply do not want to go to work knowing that they're supporting uh, Trump's unique brand of chaos. And so, it, you know, Trump, Trump did... Uh, he gave them an off ramp, you know, in the final two weeks of his presidency, he, he gave not only the GOP an off ramp to, to disconnect from him. He gave Twitter and very easy uh, YouTube, a very easy exit ramp uh, to, to disengage from him. And cynically, they were very the big social was very much in favor of Trump and the and the ratings he brought, not unlike uh, some people cynically feel about the media business, uh, giving him a lot of airtime for right. ratings. And, uh, you know, cynically, you two weeks before Trump's gone, uh, you know, and, and um, you know, that, that would certainly appease the blue wave that's about to, to hit our shores on Wednesday. Right. So, but, but where does it end, Jason? And are you worried about as we've moved from, you know, uh, Twitter suspensions to actual cloud service that this will bleed into areas that uh, do not reflect a true danger, but are more politically motivated? Yeah, this is a very interesting question. What I've encouraged my friends to do is not take the black swan event of Trump and make policy based on Donald Trump's unique brand of, of chaos that he creates in the world. It's like, basing things on the Joker's behavior in a Batman movie. Like he did crazy things that really stress test, not only our democracy, but it also stress test everything he touched. And, you know, I, if it was me and I was, it was Twitter, I would have given him a hundred day suspension. And then, you know, just to, to not give, um, you know, the right wing, you know, uh, or the, the alt right too much um, ammunition, but these are private services and, and they have the right to serve who they want. And, all of this is going to do is create a whole nother class of startups um, for us to invest in and, and for us to back and the free market will do its work. So there'll be an AWS competitor that says, hey, we're going to put our foot down and we're going to allow uh, freedom of speech on a level that might make some people uncomfortable. And so it'll just be a business opportunity um, for some other companies to, to service these folks. And I do think it's kind of a one-time event. And I do think that it was driven by public safety. I don't think this was a coordinated, we hate Trump attack because all these, you know, Tim Cook was more than happy to go to meetings with Ivanka and, and Trump for the last four years. I mean, he was, you know, at the right hand of Trump in every photo op. So it, it's obvious that this was more about public safety than you know, the, the employees of all these but Silicon Jason, Valley companies hating Trump. Jason, a, a couple of follow ups to what you just said there. One is it, it sounds like you think there will be a further fragmentation of social media, not just fragmentation of what people are seeing and what they're interacting with on platforms like Facebook and Twitter, but a full fragmentation with people with different political beliefs just communicating on different platforms. Is that right? No. No, I, I think this is like a one time stress test on the system and that we're going to go back to very boring politicians. I think people voted for boring this time with Biden. You know, who knows, in 2024, we might vote for a very boring Republican. Um, and I think we'll all get along a lot better. And, and I really do think this is like our system of stress test by a bad actor 
an insincere person, Trump, who, who just stress tested it. And I don't think that there's a need for a parlor. I think a lot of these folks will, you know, from the alt right, were driven from the right to the alt right, just like some people on the left were driven into hysteria over Trump uh, and got Trump derangement syndrome. So I think the good news for our country is it's going to be hopefully a very boring four, eight, 80 years uh, out of Washington, and we don't have this kind of chaos. Um, the, the real challenge was you had somebody sitting in the president's seat acting, you know, really erratically. And that is a very hard thing. Somebody has got the most important seat in the world, in the free world, and they're behaving in a very irrational manner. Uh, and you saw it in the people who stormed the Capitol. They said, it, the president told me to do it. Who could ever come up with a, a, a yeah, litmus Jason, test like this? It's crazy. Jason, it certainly was a very unusual situation and has been a very unusual situation. But I'm wondering if you think that the actions we took, Twitter and Facebook, uh, you know, take just in the past couple of weeks in order to shut down the president's account. Do you think that represents a sea change in terms of how they're thinking about content on their platform, perhaps in anticipation of changes to Section 230 and changes to make them more liable to what for what's shared on their platforms? Yeah, I, I, I think that we're all going to come to uh, a pretty basic agreement, which is don't incite violence, don't be a racist, don't stalk people, you know, public safety. Um, and we'll get back to uh, some reasonable freedom of speech um, uh, approach from these platforms. I think we'll keep 230. And uh, I, I think the idea that you can throw people off the platform has now been highlighted and that that can be done in an unfair manner. And I think that'll make the platforms maybe come up with an ombudsman type approach like the New York Times used to have uh, an ombudsman who would comment uh, independently on their reporting. I think that um, kind of setup for social media would be very helpful. If there was a group of people who you could appeal to if you were, you know, removed from uh, social media and they could say, hey, you know, uh, they could arbitrate it and, um that, that would be a nice solution, I think. And I think well, you'll see some self-regulation from the Twitters and Facebooks rather than, Jason, you know, putting their foot down in some way. I wonder what is, is really going on here, because there were th these talks about Amazon squashing free speech and this existential threat to Parler. It's been 10 days since AWS dropped Parler and Parler's coming back. Uh, also, is there yeah. a business model for loose content? Moderation. I mean, you talk about the idea that maybe there's a, an AWS or different social networks for, for like loose content moderation. Isn't that kind of an invitation to get your pants suit off if you're a company? And so how much more capital do you have to raise and how much more insurance do you have to have? And so therefore, how much do you have to charge? Because what advertiser is going to want to be next to that, right? A hundred percent. You got that. You nailed that one, John. Um, you, the any regulation we add to these companies uh, reinforces the incumbent's position because they have the ability to hire lawyers and moderators, and Parler doesn't, right? So, uh, but I don't think most rational people would like to run a service where people are inciting violence. And so that's a very unique group of people <laughs> who would want to live in that world. And it might be offshore, where it might be some really hardcore um, libertarians. But what they're going to find is not only do people not want to invest in that company or own equity in it, they're going to find people don't want to work for that company. And if you've been on Parler, it's, it's, it's garbage. It's a terrible app. It's poorly designed. It's slow. You're not going to get world-class people to even want to uh, be on the platform or to support it, invest in it, or build it. And that, at the end of the day, I think is, is a big part of what happened here is Jack did not want to come to work and have his top engineers and his top lieutenants leave the company. And I think it was getting to that point where it was causing so much chaos, just like it did at our Thanksgiving tables or Christmas, you know, celebrations or Zooms, you know, we had to deal with internally <laughs> in our families fighting. This is what every company yep, was dealing yep. with, with Trump's insanity. And thank God everybody voted boring. I am so excited for 72 hours from now to be able to focus on work and family and defeating, defeating the virus and not have to deal with Captain Chaos anymore. I think it's going to be wonderful to <laughs> well, remove yeah. this cognitive overhead You're, from all of our CPUs. Jason, 
Your, your broader point's good, and that is that companies, they are families, uh, and, uh, and you've got to hope that behavior in general is self-correcting, uh, no matter what part of the political aisle you're on. It's great to see you. Uh, thanks for great kicking off you. our Stay hour today. Stay safe, everybody. We'll see you soon. Better days Jason coming. Calacanis.